my name is Madison and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my experience having a MacBook as an engineering student, some of the pros and cons, what I've liked, what I didn't like, whether or not I think you should use slash can get away with a MacBook as an engineering student. Before we jump into today's video, this video is in partnership with Prep Expert. Prep Expert is an online website that has a ton of resources and courses to help you master your standardized tests. Whether it's ACT, SAT, the GRE, what have you, there are a ton of long-term and fast-paced courses to help you boost your score. Whether you are taking it in a week or two or you're taking it in three months, they have courses formatted to help you maximize the amount of points you can get on these test scores, which if you are in high school right now watching this video, um, as you prep for your own college experience and whatnot this upcoming year, and you're looking to boost your ACT score, SAT score, I highly recommend you go check out Prep Expert. I will have my link down below. <sighs> Without further ado, let's just jump on into it. As y'all may know, I am an aerospace ambassador for my school um, that basically means I give tours to prospective students. I've actually had a lot of viewers on my tours which is funny. Um, I do some donor events, I do like high school outreach things, that sort of thing, and one of the biggest questions I get asked is what type of computer do you use and what type of computer should you use? I am currently a senior in an engineering program. I'm almost done, which is crazy. Um, I'm in my last semester now before I head off to grad school. I'm studying aerospace for a little bit of context. I know every single major is different, so I'm going to be talking about my experiences with that, as well as, as far as I know, how my peers have gotten away and enjoyed their MacBooks for different other engineering disciplines and whatnot. So. It's no secret buying a computer is expensive, especially upgrading to one with a graphics card. A heavy duty PC, laptop, gaming computer, that sort of thing is expensive. Um, you could be looking at almost $4,000 depending on the specs that you were looking for. Now I had a MacBook in high school and was not really ready to drop another few thousand dollars on a new computer, especially if I didn't need it. Um, I also love Mac, I love Apple, I have an iPad, I love the entire community. The convenience of being able to airdrop things, share files, that whole shebang is fantastic. Um, and I really didn't want to move if I didn't have to. I stuck it out, tried it for a year, figured out it worked well enough, and actually upgraded to the MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. Um, I got the very first Apple chip that they came out with, the M1 chip, in 2021. So I've had my computer two years now, and I have loved it. So um, there's a little bit of background on that. Alrighty, the first thing we're gonna discuss today is programs. Now, like I said, I am an aerospace major. There are a lot of programs aerospace majors do or do not use relative to other degrees and programs. So do with that what you will. Um, the biggest programs I use in my degree would be MATLAB. I use MATLAB all the time. Um, MATLAB in the last year or so has now had a version come out that runs on the Mac chips, so um, the M1 and the M2, and probably the M2 Pro now, honestly, because it's really all the same at this point, um, which is great. And even before that, running it through Rosetta worked awesome. I have had no issues with that. I was a little bit worried about um, how programs that didn't have um, M1 developed programs or versions yet would run on my computer. So far, they've all been great. MATLAB works great. As far as CAD goes, I do not CAD very often, but when I do CAD, most of the time it's in Fusion 360. Um, there is a native Fusion 360 version for Mac that is fantastic. If you've never done CAD in Fusion 360, it looks like it was made for an elementary schooler and I love it. Like there's like five buttons. SolidWorks and Autodesk Inventor are so complicated, honestly. Like, I think it's a little excessive. They're very, very powerful programs, but you can do the same thing 150 different ways with SolidWorks and Inventor. Um, I feel like this just makes it more confusing, especially if you're not like an expert. I probably have at least a few hundred hours of CAD experience, but I am by no means an expert. I took two CAD classes in high school, 
Um, I feel fairly confident in Inventor, SolidWorks, and Fusion 360, but if I don't need anything fancy and I can do it in Fusion 360, it works great. I love it. So there's that. Um, as far as other coding programs go, VS Code is a program I use fairly often. I am a computer science minor, so Visual Studio Code or VS Code is great. Um, you can download just about any package and run just about any language on there. Um, the three main ones I've used are C, C++, and Python on there, but there's a ton of other ones. And then WeBots. This is new to me, um, but it is a program I use for my robotics class um, that so far has been great. I've had no issues with it on the Mac, which is awesome. Um, and it does everything I need it to, which is great. Programs like ROS, Robot Operating System. Um, ROS 2 has a Mac version. The original ROS does not have a Mac version. So depending on what you might need there, that might influence your decision. But for the most part, almost everything I need runs natively on Mac right now, which is great. As far as things I have run into trouble with not having, again, we have Inventor and SolidWorks that do not run on Mac, which is a bummer. Not great, but honestly, I don't use them a ton, and if I do need to use a specific CAD program other than Fusion 360, I can either use a school computer or a cloud compute into the school's network. Not a big deal, um, especially the Mac M1 chips or the M chips lately. I guess one, two, and the Pro are all fantastic. I feel like they're by far powerful enough if you want a good Wi-Fi network to run these programs well. Um, if you don't know what cloud computing is, you can basically remote desktop into another computer. I don't totally know how it works, if I'm going to be honest. And I'm assuming if you're a high schooler and you're watching this video, you might not be an expert either. So I'm going to try to explain it in like elementary school words because like I said I don't want to pretend like I really really know what I'm talking about but um CU campus has a ton of different computers with every program under the sun on them I can log into the CU cloud computing program or website on my computer and it will basically run programs through a computer on CU campus on my computer if that makes sense so i can be catting on my computer but it's actually doing all of the processing all of the work whatever it is on a cu campus computer if that hopefully makes sense if not google it but basically i can just cloud compute not the most convenient thing ever but like i said m1 chips that's the one i have right now is by far powerful enough to do that, especially if I'm on fairly decent Wi-Fi. I've had no issues cloud computing, which is great. Ansys is another program that does not have a Mac version. Ansys is a company that has a ton, a ton of different programs. Um, Ansys Maxwell does a lot of work with, I've at least used it for magnetism sorts of things. Um, I forget the exact ANSYS program, but I use an ANSYS program for my structures class that did a lot of like stress analysis and finite element analysis, so FEA modeling, um, but I could also not run on my computer. Again, if I really needed to, I could go on campus and use one of their computers or cloud compute into it, but I am not, and I would not suggest dropping a few thousand dollars on a computer that you're going to use for a three week lab for one of your classes in the middle of your junior year not worth it. Um, other than that, I personally have not run into any issues with programs that I have had issues with um, or haven't found a solution to running, which is nice. As far as convenience goes, the Mac I think is great and especially some of the newer Macs. Um, I feel like Apple sort of took a turn down the minimalist road potentially for the worse. I used to have the 2015 MacBook Pro that had the USB-C slots, that had the HDMI ports, that had the SD card slots, it had everything I needed. Granted it was thicker, it was heavier, it was a little bit bigger in every dimension honestly, but it was nice to have it all there. And as much as I love the seamless, simplistic design of my current, um, I have the 2021 M1 chip MacBook Pro. All it has is a headphone jack and two USB-C ports. Again, it looks nice, it's very minimalist, it's very sleek, and it's very clean, 
but as far as practicality goes all it's making me do is lug around different things i'm lugging around adapters i'm lugging around mice i'm lug lugging around dongles that sort of thing just so that i can have my computer charging at once i can have an SD card plugged in, I can have a USB-C plugged in, or a USB plugged in so that I can have a separate mouse going for catting, that sort of thing. Like I said, I feel like especially some of their more, I don't want to say old, but the 2021 and the earlier 2022 MacBooks that had so few ports and holes, all it was doing for the most part I felt was just adding more headache. I personally don't think that two USB-C ports on that computer is enough if that's all you're getting. One of those is taken up by power and one of those is taken up by a dongle. I feel like you at least need two accessible ports on top of a charging hole for a very functional and easy to use computer. Going back to the whole cat issue, it's not like I'm doing cat all the time, um, so it's not like I need a mouse plugged in very often, but it is just one more thing that makes the convenience just a little bit more annoying, I guess you could say. Moving on to the size, I absolutely love the size of my computer, holy cow. Now I know I just complained about how I wish it were just a tiny bit bigger to have all those little extra holes and whatnot. But I see kids walk around with massive, massive gaming computers that are like three inches thick for these massive fans, these massive graphics card, like crap ton of RAM. I just, I just don't think it's, you know, super high CPUs, GPUs. I do not think it's necessary if I'm being completely honest. Um, <laughs> honestly, in my experience, if you are running a program or you write a program that is so poorly, poorly written that your computer resorts to its fan and it's like 2017 or newer, you did something fundamentally wrong. That is your problem, not your computer's problem. Basically what I'm saying is if you write a script that takes 10 minutes to run and your computer is over there worrying, it's hot as, you know, a mug, that is not your computer's problem. That probably means you need to take a class on code performance, um, or like a computer systems lab. I took a computer systems class and there is an entire lab called the performance lab and you basically just learned how to optimize your code so your poor computer isn't dying or melting. Um, again, that's just my experience. I have not experienced a lab or a class that has com pushed my computer to the limit like that that I couldn't help myself is basically what I'm saying. I am so grateful I don't lug around like a six pound literal brick that is four inches thick and just massive in every direction. Um, they're also less cute, let's be honest, far less aesthetically please appealing. Um, now, if you already have a gaming laptop or if you really want a gaming laptop, you game, by all means, go for it. I'm just saying that is not a capability I would personally take advantage of outside of school. And if I can get away with not using it during school, I don't think it's necessary for me to have one. So if you were in a similar boat to me, I don't think a gaming laptop is necessary. And the last and final point I want to make is that most schools, or at least in my experience, is almost every single school has laptops and computers available for you to use to some capacity. So at least at CU Boulder, if you are a student, you will get swipe access into these labs and the classrooms with all the computers you could ever need after hours if you do need to use them for a class, a lab, homework, a club, personal project, that sort of thing. All I'm saying by this is that I have free resources and opportunities available to me to go use more high powerful, more highly powerful computers if I need them, and I'm sure you do too. Not only that, but CUIT has computers you can check out and borrow, especially if yours breaks. They're always there to help you fix your computer, that sort of thing, and if you are looking into getting a new computer, Overall, I think the Mac is great. I think you can totally get away with it. I have a lot of friends in mechanical, electrical, computer science that all have Macs and are able to make it work. 
Again, if you are looking to upgrade com your computer, you have the financial means, and that is a step and an investment you want to take, by all means, go for it. I do not think you will regret getting a more powerful computer if there aren't things you are going to miss on the Mac. I personally would not want to switch completely away from Mac just because I've gotten so used to Apple's editing software that they have available and would not want to give up my video editing quality and knowledge for a gaming computer. However, is that if that is not something that you are worried about or encountering and you are solely looking at this as an opportunity to get to use SolidWorks more often, um, maybe Eagle, some other programs for some other majors, go for it, but I do think you can get away with the Mac very successfully and will enjoy your experience. So if y'all have any questions for me, be sure to let me know down below. I'd be happy to answer them. I will also have my other MacBook related videos linked down below. I've made a few other ones about using them for school. Um, my first impressions of the M1 chip, that sort of thing, and would love to have you check those out if you're interested. But um, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day, and I will see you all in my next video. Peace out. Bye.